G'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making cloth banded cheddar and it's a traditional English cheese from the Somerset area, I believe. Now, we're going to be following tradition by cloth banding the cheddar. We're not going to be waxing it, uh, which actually increases the flavour of the cheese. So we're going to smother on the outside of the cheese some cheesecloth and we're going to put that uh, we're going to put that all over the cheese and then we're going to smother it in coconut oil. Traditionally it's lard, but I don't have any lard handy, but I have found that uh, coconut oil is a good substitute. Anyway, on with the cheese. And the ingredients are 10 litres of full cream milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, 12 drops of a natto, and one and a half tablespoons of cheese salt, some cheesecloth, make sure it's an old one but a clean one, and some lard or coconut oil for banding. So we're going to heat our milk up now. I'm using a double boiler and we're going to bring it up to the target temperature. And the target temperature for this cheese is 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. Now once at that target temperature we're going to add our mesophilic culture. I'm going to sprinkle that all over the top. And we're going to let that rehydrate for a little bit. And then we're going to stir it in gently. Now we're going to put the lid on and we're going to allow the milk to acidify or ripen for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes later, we're going to start adding all of the other ingredients. So make sure you add these while you're stirring. So firstly the annatto, and this gives the cheese a creamier looking consistency or colour. So give that a good stir through. Now we're going to add in the calcium chloride. And keep stirring and then we're going to add in the rennet, which is coming up soon. Notice that I'm not whipping the milk into a frenzy. We're just uh, stirring that gently so we're not aerating the milk. So here's the rennet. We're just going to pour that in now while we're stirring. And just stir for no longer than one minute. And before you pop the lid on, make sure the milk has stopped moving. So what we're going to do is check for a clean break after 40 minutes now. In this first instance, it was a bit of a sloppy break. It wasn't as neat as I thought it could be. So I left that for another 10 minutes. And then I checked it off camera and it was fine after the, uh, the full 50 minutes. So I cut the curd into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. Just using my trusty curd cutter there and then finishing off the vertical cuts with a knife. And one way and then the other. There we go. Now we're going to let the curds heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, just start stirring. Now we're going to put the heat back on, but we're going to slowly increase the temperature to 39 degrees Celsius over the period of 40 minutes. So here it is 40 minutes later. You can see the curds about baked bean size. See the annatto starting to kick in there. 
you can see everything's going quite yellow. So we're going to start the cheddaring process now. Firstly, we allow the curds to settle to the bottom for 40 minutes. And then once the 40 minutes has elapsed, we're just going to gently drain off the whey. Now you could keep this for a whey ricotta, but I've already got one on the fridge. There's only so much ricotta you can eat. There you go. It comes out in one big slab. Now that's what you're aiming for. Now we're going to pop that, drain that just gently a little bit, and then we're going to pop that back into the pot because we need to keep the curds warm whilst we're cheddaring. So we're going to cut the curd while it's in the pot. I'm just going to cut the curd mass in half, which gives you an approximate uh, same sort of curd size as they do in the traditional uh, cheddar making process. So we're going to flip over each half for, no, just quickly there, if I can stop the pot from moving, there we go. So just flip it over and then let it rest for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to transfer this back uh, to the double boiler just to make sure that we can maintain that target temperature of 39 Celsius, 102 Fahrenheit. Now it does seep out a fair bit away, but that's no big deal. Just make sure it's covered so no dust or fluff gets in there. And we're going to do that for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes has elapsed. You can see a fair bit of ways come out. Okay, so just tip over, uh, sorry, turn over each slab. And you can see that the curds are shrinking all the time during this process. So pop the lid back on and wait for another 10 minutes. So 10 minutes has elapsed again. So just turn over each half again. Pretty easy this cheddaring, isn't it? There we go, pop the lid back on. And then one more time. So this final um, cheddaring turn is for 15 minutes this time. Let's flip it over. There we go. Pop the lid back on. So that's 45 minutes cheddaring time in total. So you can see uh, that's how much whey is collected on the bottom of the pot. Now we're just going to drain that whey out now. So we're just going to plonk the slabs into the uh, Cheese line, cheesecloth lined colander, and then whatever other bits are sitting in the bottom. It's not much. It's all good. Right, so I'm just going to transfer that to a chopping board because we need to cut it down into small fingers of curd. So about oh, half an inch, which is 1.25 centimetres, and then cut that in half. Normally in the uh, cheddar factory, the, this big machine, it's like a shredder that does all this for you. But somewhere at home, we have to improvise. So I'll just cut it into cubes now. Okay, we're going to mill this now. So we're just going to break this, each cube in half. As you can see there, I've started and I'll show you the finishing off of the process. For those wondering, that is a LED light that's in the way. I couldn't look through the little viewer. But you can see the process. We're just cutting each of those in half. So we've got chunks of curd, so we're going to add in our one and a half tablespoons of salt and then we're just going to mill that through.
we just transfer that into our cheesecloth lined cheese basket. I'm using a uh, 165 millimeter basket there, which takes up to 10 litres of milk. Well, the curd's made from 10 litres of milk, no problems at all. So just uh, fold the cloth over and pop the follower on top. And then we're going to screw that down to the, the pressure for the initial pressing. Now, if you haven't got a cheese press like this one, just apply the right amount of weight onto your uh, follower. So we're going to do it at 11 kilos or 24 pounds for one hour. This is just to form the, the cheese initially. You'll see it will have quite a few gaps um, in the cheese. Okay, just make sure it can drain freely. You see a fair bit of waste coming off still. Well, creamy at first, but then it goes clear. Okay, so an hour has elapsed, and we're going to take it out, turn it over. Just be gentle because it may not have formed properly. Still, there are a little bit of holes, but uh, now we're going to tighten it all up. So, we're going to press really heavily at 22 kilos or 50 pounds for 12 hours. Just make sure you keep the pressure on. If you've got a spring tight like this one, you're going to have to re-tighten the spring um, probably about every six hours. So really heavy pressure for cheddar uh, to make sure that all of those cubes of curd knit together closely. So here I am in my work clothes the next morning, <laughs> taking the cheese out of the press. So it's formed very well. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can see that there's no mechanical holes or anything like that. It's all smooth all the way around. And we'll just get a cheese board and mat. Pop that on there. Now we don't need to brine it. It's already got the salt in it, remembering from the milling stage. Now we're going to air dry that for two to three days. Uh, there it is after one day and there it is after two days starts to yellow up now we're going to cloth band this now we're not going to wax the cheese we're going to use the traditional method so cut two squares and then one rectangle which is going to be your circumference there we go don't mind the hair cut okay so that wraps around the circumference okay trim that all off lovely so we coat it with either lard or coconut oil so I'm using coconut oil here and you just uh, give it an initial coating so that the cheesecloth can stick to it so and you smooth that down as well just by dabbing your hand in the bowl there and just wiping it all over the cloth pretty easy to do really so you trim any excess you just need it neat on top and bottom as well so just to make sure you got that all there so, so that's all done now. I put the top and bottom layer on, just trimming that off, smoothing it down with the, the coconut oil, the liquid coconut oil. So lovely and smooth. Um, so nothing can get in. So we're going to mature that at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit for three months minimum uh, or longer for a sharper cheddar. I'm going to mature mine for six months. So make sure you turn it weekly when it's in the cheese cave. So that's what it looks like before we pop it in the cheese cave. We're going to have a taste test obviously in about six months time if you can hang around. And don't forget to visit our shop and subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other videos like Petite Blue or Farmhouse Cheddar. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.